Hey there Fearless Gamers, this is Matt the Clown coming at you with another video. How are you doing guys? Um, today I want to discuss with you something that I recently discussed on my personal blog, Coming Up Cyprus. Uh, if you follow our Facebook, uh, you have probably seen uh, the link that I posted. Uh, but if you haven't, whatever, you know, you don't have to go and read it because I'm about to do a video update. Uh, if you do follow us on Facebook and you did click the link, I hope you enjoyed it, but I hope you also took into account the warning that I left that it's my personal blog. It's not uh, something that has to do with the Fearless group or anything like that, so as a result, it's a little less family friendly than I am here on the channel. That said, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about something that we discussed in episode 9 of Touching Base. Episode 9 was... Excuse me. Episode 9 was the episode in which we discussed uh, army transportation. Army transportation is very important to anyone in this hobby. It's something you're going to eventually have to figure out. Even if you don't uh, play in a gaming store, you're probably going to have to move your army around or at the very least store it somewhere safe. Putting it on a shelf just isn't an option because it's going to get dusty or someone's going to get drunk and clumsy and knock it off the shelf and break the wings off all your sanguinary guard. I dropped one last night so it's fresh on the mind. <laughs> Uh, so you're gonna need to come up with some solution for that. Now, we discussed a number of solutions in that episode of Touching Base. Uh, in this video I'm going to discuss two of the, the solutions that we touched upon, but didn't go too deeply into simply because, well, we didn't have time. We try to keep those episodes as short as possible. Uh, in that, uh, it, it, these, these two, uh, solutions that I'm discussing are the... Oh, it's so big. Sable Army Transport bag and the Battle Foam 216 pack. Now the reason I'm making this video uh, now versus back when we filmed it is because the other Fearless, uh, James, Matt, and Stark Lord, uh, along with a couple other friends, all threw in and bought me the Battle Foam case here for my birthday this weekend, which was really cool of them. Thanks, guys. I don't know if you guys even watch these videos. I know I watch all the videos on the channel. If you're watching Other Fearless, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so they, they bought me the Battle Foam case, specifically for my uh, Blood Angels. So I took it as an opportunity to not just store my Blood Angels and have a cool case, but to tell you guys a little more in depth what the differences between the Sable Designs case and the Battle Foam case are. I'm going to start with the Sable Designs case. Uh, I'm going to have to raise it up a little higher than expected. Okay. So, the Sable Designs case is a soft bag. Uh, I don't know if how, you can see how well... That was my phone, I apologize. I don't know if you can see how well it, like, smushes, but it's a soft case. There's no hard shell, there's no real uh, <clears throat> impact protection. So if you're clumsy, be careful. Again, my phone. I apologize. <laughs> Ten bucks says it's the Star Lord. Uh, but if you don't really care about a hard case, that's fine. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needs a hard case. There's a lot of foam in here. But to each their own. Uh, from there, you have two big pouches in the front. As you can see, I'm fitting my whole hands in there. They're good for storing your dice boxes, uh, smaller templates, stuff like that. Your uh, your range finder, that's, that's what we call a uh, tape measure here at the Fearless. Um, yeah, it's good for storing gaming supplies. Then you also have up here a real big pocket. Now in this pocket, I keep my 5th uh, edition miniature rulebook, which... Uh, is outdated, so I probably don't need to, but it was just in there. As well as well as three codices or codexes, if you prefer the incorrect plural of the word. Uh, but you can still fit a whole bunch more than that in this pocket. Uh, you can fit your larger templates. Uh, you can you can definitely fit the full like big rulebook in there, and still probably have room for a, code, a codex or two. <coughs> I think that's actually my favorite part of this case because being able to carry all the things you need in one bag 
is really super handy and really super convenient. Um, so now that I've discussed my favorite part of the bag, I'm gonna discuss with you my least favorite part of the bag. And that is the shoulder strap. I think it's a nylon, I don't know my fabrics, if it ain't nylon, post in the comments. Uh, it's attached on the left side just via stitching. The left side also via stitching, but there's the, the, uh, the plastic buckle that helps you adjust the size. Um, as you can see, I have it on the smallest possible, uh, the largest rather possible setting. And this thing does not really fit too well around me, as you can see. Uh, you know, it's a little constrictive. Now granted, I'm about 5'7", 270 pounds, I'm packing a little extra weight. Uh, but even beyond that, even if I was 50 pounds lighter, it would be a little bit restrictive just because of the size of the strap. Uh, smaller people, your, your mileage will vary. Uh, you know, the vet, he, much smaller guy than I am in general, he has no problem with this thing. So, if you're a larger person, this shoulder strap, not the best. Uh, that said, you can just do this. You know, there are solutions. But I don't love it. It's my least favorite part of the case. Now down to brass tacks, let's talk about what's inside this thing. Once you open it up on the top, you get the initial flimsy little thin foam sheet that you put on top to protect your top layer of models. Um, it's not the greatest mode of protection, but it does need to be there uh, just in case you want to put something on top of your case and not have weapons snap off. Um, and then underneath is a number of pluck foam layers. Now, this is the smallest case that uh, Army Transport offers. It's about 72 bucks, but inside it comes with two of the thick pluck foam layers, which, if you're not familiar with pluck foam, I sure hope you can see this, uh, you reach in and you pull out these little bits of foam to sort of achieve I really hope you can see that, uh, the shape of the model that you want to store. Uh, so this one, the cheapest one, comes with two thicker sheets for things like vehicles or if you have models that are ideally stood up with pluck foam like the uh, Sanguinary Guard that I'm using, they are a little too uh, deep to be put in the thicker, uh, pluck, the thinner rather pluck foam. These are meant for your standard tactical marines. Your, uh, your Imperial Guard, your, your Foot Orcs, things like that. It comes with six of these thinner sheets. Uh, I'm not going to pull them all out, because they all look the same. Uh, but I use this case primarily for my Black Templars. I was using this top sheet here for my Sanguinary Guard before I was given the Battle Foam case. Pluck Foam is alright, you know? I mean, it, it does the job. It's a little bit extra effort but not so much that that's a deal breaker. The only problem I have with pluck foam is, where'd it go? I was gonna grab the little bit that I just pulled off, but it's already vanished. Uh, when you're done with like an army's worth of pluck foam, you end up with a huge pile of this garbage foam. Uh, if you're a crafty kind of person, you could probably turn that into terrain or some other craft project. But if you're just not into that sort of thing, or you just don't have any projects on the shelf right now that would need foam, you have to make the decision between store all this garbage foam in a bag somewhere, or throw it out. I like to try and protect the environment as much as possible, so having a lot of garbage foam just sitting around, not my favorite thing. Uh, throwing it out, just as bad, because now it's out there in a landfill somewhere, and some... Some animal might turn it into a nice home, another animal just might eat it and die. So, not my favorite thing in the world, pluck foam. It's good in a pinch, it's good if you don't want to spend the extra money on custom cut foam, but I don't love it. But speaking of custom cut foam, this is the uh, Battle Foam 216 pack. Uh, the pack system is defined by having an extra zipper down here that uh, allows you to connect multiple bags together into a sort of uh, conglomerate bag that lets you, you know, so this, this way you don't have to buy a huge bag not knowing what you're going to want. Uh, you can just buy a bunch of the, the packs, 
stick them together onto maybe a larger, uh, larger bag and go ahead. Um, okay, so let's start with my. Uh, okay, so you know we're just gonna start with how I started before. I don't know if you can hear that. It's a hard case. It has a hard shell all around the outside, back, the face. Hard case. Somebody like me, love it. I am clumsy. I drop things. I kick things. I trip over things. So the soft case over there, while it's serviceable, I need to make sure it's somewhere out of the way so I don't end up running into it. This thing, I can put it wherever the heck I want because if I run into it, whatever. Uh, as you can see, I'm already feeling more cavalier with how I move it around, and there are models in here. Um, it's also a little bit slimmer designed. It's slightly smaller. Not so much that I would say it's, a, it's a, uh, an advantage of one product over the other, but if you have limited storage space, or you just can't fit something a little clumsier and shaped like this, the Battle Foam case will fit anywhere a briefcase fits. It's quite thoroughly briefcase size and shape. Uh, or a laptop bag, you know. So there's that to be considered. Uh, another thing to consider is that it's got the briefcase handle, the rubber grip, a nylon handle on the top here that allows you to carry it flat if you're a little more nervous about flipping your models around. And it's got a shoulder strap that I haven't even used yet because I actually prefer to hold things with a briefcase style handle. It's how I carry my laptop bags. It's how I carry any sort of messenger bag that has that kind of handle. It's just something that I find easier. I imagine I'll eventually use the shoulder strap because maybe my hands will be full, but that's a, a future that I haven't seen yet. Uh, the shoulder strap is same fabric as the, uh, the army transport bag. Uh, I can already, the, uh, the, 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 it's attached via metal versus just stitching and plastic. The size restrictor is metal. Uh, it is stitched onto the side because you kind of have to do that regardless. But, um, I think it's probably an overall higher quality shoulder strap. It's even got like a little bit of you know, gripping padding here for when it does touch your shoulder, which I think is kind of cool, and that adjusts. Um, so it's got three modes of carrying, you know, so it, it appeals to a bunch of different people. If the shoulder strap is too small for you, you have two handles to work with. If you have a bunch of hands full, you can go to the shoulder strap. I think that's pretty cool. It also has a little uh, luggage tag holder here, which I also think is very, very cool. Uh, so you can put like your name in here so people know, oh, that's not my bag, because maybe you're in a room full of people who have an, a battle phone case. Uh, the only thing I really dislike about this case before even getting to the inside is on the sides it has these little pouches that just, I mean, they're a nice formality, but they're really small. Like, they're really small. And I can't figure out how you're supposed to store anything gaming related in there unless you store your dice loose, which I don't recommend. Uh, or maybe you have, like, one of those tubes of dice versus the box, but the tubes of dice don't have as many dice, and those don't tend to be full of D6s. Not the best for Warhammer 40k. Uh, so that's, that's my only real complaint about this bag, is that there's, aside from storing your army, there's no other storage space. You can't carry your codex with it, you can't carry your templates with it, unless you want to keep them inside the case with your models, and that's a dangerous proposition. Because that just puts a lot more pressure on the little models inside, and I don't like the idea. Not a fan. But let's get down to, again, Brass Tacks, the main event. Uh, both products have very nice zippers. Not had any problems with them. We're gonna open this bad boy up. And again, you have that floppy bit of foam on the top. Uh, I, I did notice that the the top layer of foam for the battle foam case is a little bit thicker than the one for the army transport, which I like. You know, it adds that extra little bit of padding on the top. Uh, something else, else that's kind of cool is in the top case. There's um, I'm sure you saw like a little embroidery thing. That's actually a place to store paintbrushes, which. I don't carry my paintbrushes around, I do most of my painting at home, but um, they do sell 
uh, foam sheets for carrying paint pots. So if you do get a 216 pack to carry your painting supplies and your modeling supplies, you have somewhere to put your paintbrushes, which I think is super cool. Uh, not necessarily for me as a consumer, but it might be for you. So in the battle foam case, you get not pluck foam, but custom cut foam. Now, I don't want to tilt it too far because I got dudes in here, which I will be doing a deeper review on sometime very soon in my sanguinary guard uh, and Dante. But something that I think is super cool is that the uh, all the special characters for uh, I'm just gonna get up here. Oh, well, there we go. For the Blood Angels are up here at the top in their own special shapes. You see, Dante here comes right out and goes right back in. It's shaped exactly like him. Uh, this one here is for the Sanguinor, uh, <laughs> which that's super cool. I don't have to pluck it in a weird sort of blocky version because it's it fits him perfectly. It's meant to fit Dante and the Sanguinor and whatever other special characters you may or may want. Uh, each of these is cut specifically to size for the very unique Sanguinary Guard and their stupid wings. <laughs> uh, this one here is cut specifically for a chapter banner bearer with wings. It's very, very cool, and there's no mess, which is something that I am very fond of. Uh, I don't know what this one's for. I'm sure the Fearless will tell me. If they watch this video, they'll say, oh, you idiot, it's for this thing that you're using. I'll go, oh, I didn't know it goes there. Anyway, uh, it, it has... <clears throat> the thing that has me most impressed, aside from custom cut foam, is how many dudes they fit in one sheet. I mean, yeah, you can tell already that the sheet is wider, uh, it has a, has a greater width and depth than, uh, than your average pluck foam sheet, but like, it's not that much bigger. <laughs> and you can fit, just, there's 10 here, 3, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, you know, 36 dudes uh, with seven special characters, a chapter banner bear, and 10 dudes that are assault marines with wings. I think these are all meant for, for assault marines here. Uh, that's a lot of guys on one sheet of foam. Uh, and then beneath it, there's another custom cut sheet, which I can show you in full because there's no guys in it. Uh, I hope the lighting is catching it. That has two spots for rhinos, two spots for uh, dreadnoughts, and then three, six, nine, ten, thirteen, uh, twenty, uh, th yeah, thirty, space for thirty more dudes, some of which are definitely assault marines. That's a lot of guys in one sheet. And another cool thing down at the bottom here, I hope you can see it, is they've customized this bottom sheet for me. They put, you know, Matt the Clown, Fearless Games. That's really cool. You know, I mean, it's not necessary. It's not, uh, you know, it's kitschy. I really like it because let's say I don't put my name on the outside of this and Matt the Vet or Stark Lord grabs up my case because maybe they bought themselves a battle foam case and they get home and they go, ah, oh, whose blood angels are these? Because Maybe there's a universe in which we're all making the same color scheme blood angels, and we all paint them the same. They'll go, oh, it's the clowns. You know, or someone else might go, oh, this is that fearless guy's case. Oops. You know. But aside from that, it's just kitschy, cool little thing. Uh, where was I going with this? Give me a moment. So yeah, I, I really think custom foam is my preferred method because you save yourself the mess, you save yourself, you save the environment a little bit because I'm sure that they have a way of recycling that foam over at, uh, over at, uh, Battle Foam. You, uh, you get stuff that's gonna fit as many dudes as possible because they sit and they lay out your entire plan because you don't just say, hey, I want a case, cut me some foam. You gotta tell them what you're using. Uh, which is, is cool for like Warhammer 40k players, uh, uh, Hordes players, War Machine players. They actually have all of the major things uh, already shaped out. 
you know, like they know what shapes Dante and the Sanguinor are, they know what shapes you need for a Rhino or a Razorback. So you just need to tell them, hey, I need room for all these things. Which is the only downside to custom cut foam. You need to know what your army is going to con consist of before you buy the foam. Which, funny story, when they were, when the other Fearless were talking about buying me the Battle Foam case, I didn't have my army list for the Legends of War army set out. I was just gonna kinda fly by the seat of my pants and make as many, whatever dudes I thought would be cool at the time. Not the best tactical choice, but still fun. And so Starklord started messaging me saying, you know, you really should make a, an army list, something you haven't done before, and I know you're trying to like learn how to do new things, and, and I think it'll just make your army better overall. So that night I sat down and, you know, came up with my army list, and I sent, you know, I put it in our, uh, you know, communal Dropbox thing, because we have one of those. And, uh, just to see if, what, what the other fearless thought of it. And it turned out the main reason he was, he was trying to get me to make an army list was so that they knew what to, what foam to get. So, it's very important that you have an army list, or at least an idea of what you're going to need before you purchase a battle foam case with the custom cut foam. I'm gonna close this bad boy up real quick. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the Battle Foam case is only about $10 more than the Army Transport. Uh, the Army Transport's about $72, the Army Transport, the, the Battle Foam is about $83. So, it's not even that much more of a cost prohibitive product. Uh, yes, I looked up the price of a birthday gift, not because I was wondering what my friend spent on me, but because I needed to do it for this video. So yeah, uh, I hope that I've been clear with the differences. Now, I'm not trying to sell you one product over the other. I am not gonna lie, I very much prefer the Battle Foam case, regardless of not having the pouches that I need. Uh, I can always carry a laptop bag as well. You know, it's a little more cumbersome, but for my army transport needs, the Battle Foam case is right for me. However, I'm still going to use Army Transport products because I like having this pouch here. What I'm going to do, excuse me, hiccups, I'm going to use Army Transport for storage. Uh, when I'm not carrying an army around, I'm just going to stick, you know, like my Black Templars in here, for example. They're going to stay in here, I'm going to put them in a corner until I need them, and I'm also going to use it to store all my codices. It's a good option. And then, you know, if I need to go somewhere and I don't feel like transferring them over to whatever battle foam case I might have for them, I can still grab it and carry it around with me. I, can, I had this thing in my car for like a couple of months, and even with the soft case, there was no damage. So, I don't want you to think that I'm not going to be using uh, army transport because of battle foam. They're very equivalent products. They have different strengths and weaknesses to themselves. I have a preference, but I'm still going to uh, consume both products. Really, what I'm getting at is that army transport is a very personal thing. Uh, you might not want a hard case for one reason or another, or you might demand a hard case for one reason or another. These are all decisions you need to make. What I wanted to do was show you the major differences, because looking at product descriptions isn't always the best indicator of, of whether or not it has what you need, what you want. So I hope that this video has been illuminating to you. I hope that you understood half of what I said. I hope the audio recorded because I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, please leave a comment, uh, like the video if you did, subscribe to us please if you're into what we do. Uh, we have more things coming very soon. We're gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna entertain the heck out of you guys. But, um, you know, please support us in any way you like. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, guys, take care.